Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about one of the greatest drum books ever written. This is called Master Studies. It's a drum technique book written by Joe Morello. Now, I was fortunate enough to study with Joe right before the book was written, around 1982, and for several years after that. So I got the full benefit of working with him uh, when this book was in development. So we're going to talk about all these exercises in here. What you're going to need today is obviously a pair of sticks. I would suggest a practice pad so you don't drive yourself and your, your family crazy. And a metronome, very important. Also, uh, you'll need the book and you need to read the preface to the book. He talks about practicing and how to use the metronome and everything. Now this is a vast book. There's so much stuff in here. Um, I'll probably divide this up into two separate videos. I'll talk about the first part of it today and do another one on another day. So what you're going to need to uh, to do is keep track of your tempos. That's the number one thing I have my students do. Um, I was really lucky because when I was studying with Joe, he would play uh, side by side with me. I'm not, I don't know if he did that with all his students. Uh, he probably did, but that was super helpful because it kind of pushed me to play faster. So uh, but you need to keep track of your tempos so that you can see how you're developing. So I used to have a chart where I would, you know, have a date and, you know, uh, keep track of things. And again, some days didn't feel so, so great or as good as other days, be a little slower. But what you want to see is an upward progression slowly, maybe even over several years of speed. But the most important thing is evenness and sound. Okay, so that's what you need to work on. So... This first section, uh, accent studies. There's two parts to it. One part eighth notes and one part triplets. So we'll start with the eighth notes. Now there's going to be two dynamic levels. The accented level, which should be played fortissimo, loud, and the unaccented level, which should be played softly, piano or mezzo piano. Okay? And the accents are going to be done with our wrists. And the other notes, the non-accented notes, mostly with our fingers. And there's going to be a little wrist motion in there. Now, I'm going to be playing traditional because, like you've seen in some of my other videos, I'm very comfortable playing traditional. I also play matched, and it's definitely fine to play these match grips. grip. And I would also recommend that you do a match grip. So do them with both grips. So this first section can range in tempo anywhere from 60. Okay, now that's the half note because this is written in cut time, which would be 120, the quarter note. Um, all the way up to 112. That's about as fast as I ever got the whole section. And the way I used to practice these is I copied all the pages out and I would lay them out and tape them together on two stands and I would go through the whole thing. I'd play them 20 times each. Uh, Joe says to play them 50 times each. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> okay. So I, I was able to always get them about 20 times each without wearing out. Um, I'm not sure he ever did them 50 times each. But we used to do them in lessons you know, 10 times each, maybe maybe more sometimes. Um, spend a good deal of time doing this. So uh, we'll just do them, you know, we have a lot to cover today, so we'll do them probably about four times each. And I'll stop after each one and talk about it. So this is the first one, number one from page seven. This is the half note equals 104. One, two, ready, go. So you'll see there where I'm using my wrists on the accents and fingers on the other notes. Okay? Now that can go pretty fast. This is faster, 112. So like I said, that's pushing it. Um, I normally don't don't practice that fast anymore. So we'll go back to 104 and now we'll try number two. Okay, now number two is interesting because it's got a middle note. So a middle note is an unaccented note between two accented notes. You got to make sure that middle note stays soft. One, two, three, four. And 
again, as you see there, I'm using my wrist to do all the accents. Okay, now number three, one, two, three, four. So number three is the first one that uses a, a number of notes, and then we have an accent after those. So to do that, you use your fingers on the repeated notes, and on the last accent to note, you clinch. With the left hand, it looks like this. And if you're playing traditional, I would definitely recommend watching my traditional grip video because that talks about clinching and uh, give you a quick refresher on that. This is a three note pattern to practice and clinch where the hands, I mean the fingers of the hand, come together and you're grabbing the stick. And that creates an accent. Okay? So number four takes advantage of that. One, two, three, four. Now, I sometimes like to do a little bit of a crescendo when I have repeated notes. A little bit, because it, it helps with my hands. It helps with my technique. You don't have to do that. Without that... Okay. Now, number five is the first one that uses a technique we call the Muller technique. So uh, this is something I studied extensively with Joe. Uh, everybody does it a little differently, but the whole idea is to use your shoulders and your elbow and everything else in a whip-like motion, like that. It's kind of like pitching, like that, but you're pitching down. <laughs> okay, so, so um, there's lots of those in this book. Lots of these kinds of Muller exercises where you have repeated notes and then you have to do an accent. So let's try that. See if I can do it. Number five. One, two, three, four. Those are tough. So I would definitely suggest studying that with someone. It's not necessarily the kind of thing you can learn through a video. You need someone to correct your posture on it and things like that. Now, if you don't do that with the Muller technique, you need to slow it down and use your wrists on the accents. So in other words, this would be number five slower. One, two, three, four. That's definitely a legitimate way to do it. Fortunately, your wrists will only move so fast, so you may not be able to get that kind of speed without using the Muller technique. And this section goes on for quite a number of pages, okay? So, uh, you know, it goes all the way, wow, all right, to page 12. I have them copied on a sheet, so I never realized how many pages it was. So, uh, 13, page 13 starts the section of triplets. All right, so you're going to put the metronome on triplets. Now, this is the dotted quarter, all right? And I would say anywhere from 110 to 160. That's a good tempo to do these. I normally do them around 140 these days. My body's getting older, so I try not to push it. Now, this uses a lot of bounce. These are also great to do slow because you want to get that, that triplet, which is so common in playing jazz, and it's a great thing to be able to bounce that. So actually, let's try to do that first. If we did it like around 110, and we try to bounce that. So this is page 13, number one. One, two, three, four. So you see how I'm bouncing that left hand. 
I'm not even, I'm not using my wrist on it, just letting it bounce and timing the bounce so it's even. Now if we jump up to 140, here's how that sounds. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go to number two. Make sure you're bouncing. Three. And so forth. And it's a, it's a long, another long section. Okay? Some of them are more difficult than others, but use that technique. The bouncing, the muller, and the clinching. All right. So that's the first section, the accent studies. The next section, um, oh, also there's an eighth note and triplet combination section. I would definitely suggest doing that. All right, that starts on page 18. All right, buzz roll studies. This helped me a lot. Um, I used to have some trouble with my rolls when I was a kid in uh, high school, uh, just timing them out. And this section really improved that. So what, what you need to do here is on all the buzz strokes, you're pressing the stick into the head, but then you're releasing right away. So you get this kind of sound. Not this. That's not a buzz. That's, those are single notes. So the buzz, you really got to press, but immediately you're releasing. So I don't know if, uh, I'll try to do a close-up, but if you can see the way that's working, that I'm pressing and then releasing my fingers off the stick. That enables it to buzz. You have to apply a certain amount of pressure. So when you do a buzz roll, See, that's how it looks. You're using your fingers. You can see on that left hand how I'm doing that, okay? That's good to practice on a pad, too, because if it sounds going on a pad, it's going to sound great on a drum. All right, so the, this section is made up of buzzes on certain notes. So in other words, number one, uh, again, back to sixteenths, but I wouldn't, or, or eighths, I would normally do these at, um, I don't know, about half note equals 100, something like that. So let's try that. One, two, ready, go. So that's the first one. See how my hand's buzzing? Here's the second one. So it's tied over to the next note. Next one. Next one, make sure you're buzzing. Next one, next one, number seven now, number eight. a few times so you can hear it and then we'll go on to 10 now next And on and on. Okay, there's several pages of these as well. Now this is really also useful for doing, you know, Brazilian music, and also, uh, you know, um, uh, New Orleans music. So in that case, I'm actually really pressing into the drum. Get, a, get shorter buzzes. But the idea of these is to actually get a smooth roll eventually. Like if you turn the page and go to some of these that have continuous rolls, like number 31 just catches my eye, which would be um, this. Now, this is one of those exercises I recommend doing at many tempos, from very slow to very fast. That'll enable you to time your rolls evenly, okay? Now, I guarantee you, or your money back, uh, if you do these, 
a lot, your roll will get better, your closed roll. It has nothing to do with doubles, okay? This is, these are buzzes. And then also the triplet section, page 25, just a demo of a bunch of different ones okay same thing all right so these are tremendous for your roles I would definitely recommend doing them as much as possible so the next section okay this is my favorite section in the book these are role combinations and I just couldn't get enough of this stuff when I was studying with Joe so we used to do these every lesson faster and faster <laughs> it was a lot of fun so um you can do these at many tempos, right? Definitely start slow because they're super confusing. What this is are combinations of single strokes, buzz strokes, and double strokes. And for each one of those, you're changing your technique. So for the singles, that's kind of a wrist clinch action. And the ones that start with the left hand are especially difficult. Then also you have doubles. All bounce. And finally, you have the buzzes, which we just did. So, so, in other words, the first one, and this is page 34, by the way, we put the metronome on triplets, and we're going to do it super slow, so you can see. Okay? So this is uh, dotted quarter equals 90. So here we go. Again, so hopefully you can see the way my hands are moving in, um, in different ways for each one of those kinds of rolls, singles, doubles, and buzz. Now we'll do it faster. Once again, 140 is a tempo I usually do these at. Uh, I used to be able to do them faster, but I don't push myself like that anymore. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Next. Next. So that's the first two pages, 34 and 35, two times each, all right? And that's how I normally do them. I go back to back. So they're tremendous for developing your roles, singles, 
doubles, and buzzes. And then that section goes on to do seven strokes and nine strokes. Okay, I'm not going to play them all today. It took forever. Uh, so I definitely suggest doing that. And then we have the table of time. Um, there's some control sticking exercises in there you can look at. Uh, table of time basically is is doing um, increasing number of rhythms within a, 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 a meter. So in other words, one, well, we'll put this on. We'll do a few, a little, we'll do the whole thing. Um, now, normally I do this at 60. So in other words, it'd be, um, and this you're going to just do on quarter notes. So one, two, three, and four, and triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. One, and two, and three, and four, and triple it, triple it, triple it. tens, and onward and onward, okay? So you can go all the way up to 12s, 13s, 14s, whatever. All right, so that's table of time. Do that. Endurance. All right, now the next section, there's a lot of accent studies in here. Uh, the next uh, section, the last one we're going to go over today, is the stone killer. So this is an endurance exercise, not very musical. Basically what you're doing is you're uh, doing like a pyramid uh, scheme here. So you're going one, bunch of times and then and threes okay now you'll notice on my right hand I'll go to almost a French grip when I'm doing those I normally do these around 110 um, this is just a good warm-up to do okay not very exciting I know but uh, so in other words be like this one two three four twos one Two, three, four, threes, one. Fours, and so on, okay? And then you, you'll see how I'm moving almost to like a thumb on top grip to get my fingers moving. That's okay to do that. Well, I think it's okay to do that, all right? Good, and then there's accent. Uh, parts of that uh, where you're going. Now there you use the Muller technique. So number two, you'd go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And threes. Fours. One, two, three, four. And so on, okay? I don't want to blow out my... My chops. I got a lot of videos to do today. All right. So, uh, and then also, oh, by the way, it also goes to um, 16ths. So you'd be like, you know, that's the accented one. We'll do unaccented. So, okay, and so forth. That's really fast. You probably want to go slower. I normally do the 16ths around 100. Uh, which makes them much more manageable because you're doing lots of repeats. He used to tell me to do each one 50 times again. I didn't do that. 20 times is fine for me, okay? So if you're doing, um, you know, and so forth, okay? So it's really good for your singles and just remember to use your fingers and relax. So uh, that's all we have time for on this part of the book today. So I would definitely suggest getting it. Once again, the book is Master Studies. As you see, this is my original book. It is falling apart, but it's nice. So it probably has a different cover now, so I didn't tell you guys that. Anyway, stay tuned um, for more videos of this stuff, and thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed it.